May 24th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, 1 Kings chapters 2 and 3 from the Old Testament. When David was close to death, he told Solomon, his son, I am about to die. Be strong and become a man. Do the job the Lord your God has assigned you by following his instructions and obeying his rules, commandments, regulations, and laws as written in the law of Moses. Then you will succeed in all you do and seek to accomplish, and the Lord will fulfill his promise to me. If your descendants watch their step and live faithfully in my presence with all their heart and being, then, he promised, you will not fail to have a successor on the throne of Israel. You know what Joab, son of Zeruiah, did to me, how he murdered two commanders of the Israelite armies, Abner, son of Ner, and Amasa, son of Jether. During peacetime, he struck them down like he would in battle. When he shed their blood as if in battle, he stained his own belt and the sandals on his feet. Do to him what you think is appropriate, but don't let him live long and die a peaceful death. Treat fairly the sons of Barzillai, of Gilead, and provide for their needs, because they helped me when I had to flee from your brother, Absalom. Note well, you still have to contend with Shimei, son of Gera, the Benjaminite from Behurim, who tried to call down upon me a horrible judgment when I went to Mahanaim. He came down and met me at the Jordan, and I solemnly promised him by the Lord, I will not strike you down with the sword. But now don't treat him as if you were innocent. You are a wise man, and you know how to handle him. Make sure he has a bloody death. Then David passed away and was buried in the city of David. David reigned over Israel forty years. He reigned in Hebron seven years, and in Jerusalem thirty-three years. Solomon sat on his father David's throne, and his royal authority was firmly solidified. Haggah's son, Adonijah, visited Bathsheba, Solomon's mother. She asked, Do you come in peace? He answered, Yes. He added, I have something to say to you. She replied, Speak. He said, You know that the kingdom was mine, and all Israel considered me king. But then the kingdom was given to my brother, for the Lord decided it should be his. Now, I'd like to ask you for just one thing. Please don't refuse me. She said, Go ahead and ask. He said, Please ask King Solomon if he would give me Abishag, the Shumanite, as a wife, for he won't refuse you. Bathsheba replied, That's fine. I'll speak to the king on your behalf. So Bathsheba visited King Solomon to speak to him on Adonijah's behalf. The king got up to greet her, bowed to her, and then sat on his throne. He ordered a throne to be brought for the king's mother, and she sat at his right hand. She said, I would like to ask you for just one small favor. Please don't refuse me. He said, Go ahead and ask my mother, for I would not refuse you. She said, Allow Abishag, the Shumanite, to be given to your brother, Adonijah, as a wife. King Solomon answered his mother, Why just request Abishag, the Shumanite, for him? Since he is my older brother, you should also request the kingdom for him, for Abiathar, the priest, and for Joab, son of Zeruiah. King Solomon then swore an oath by the Lord, May God judge me severely if Adonijah does not pay for this request with his life. Now, as certainly as the Lord lives, he who made me secure allowed me to sit on my father David's throne and established a dynasty for me as he promised. Adonijah will be executed today. King Solomon then sent Benaiah, son of Jehoiada, and he killed Adonijah. The king then told Abiathar the priest, Go back to your property in Anathoth. You deserve to die, but today I will not kill you because you did carry the ark of the sovereign Lord before my father David, and you suffered with my father through all his difficult times. Solomon dismissed Abiathar from his position as priest of the Lord, fulfilling the decree of judgment the Lord made in Shiloh against the family of Eli. When the news reached Joab, for Joab had supported Adonijah, Although he had not supported Absalom, 
he ran to the tent of the Lord and grabbed hold of the horns of the altar. When King Solomon heard that Joab had run to the tent of the Lord and was right there beside the altar, he ordered Benaiah, son of Jehoiada, go strike him down. When Benaiah arrived at the tent of the Lord, he said to him, The king says, Come out. But he replied, No, I will die here. So Benaiah sent word to the king and reported Joab's reply. The king told him, Do as he said, strike him down and bury him. Take away from me and from my father's family the guilt of Joab's murderous, bloody deeds. May the Lord punish him for the blood he shed behind my father David's back. He struck down and murdered with the sword two men who were more innocent and morally upright than he, Abner, son of Ner, commander of Israel's army, and Amasa, son of Jether, commander of Judah's army. May Joab and his descendants be perpetually guilty of their shed blood, but may the Lord give perpetual peace to David, his descendants, his family, and his dynasty. So Benaiah, son of Jehoiada, went up and executed Joab. He was buried at his home in the wilderness. The king appointed Benaiah, son of Jehoiada, to take his place at the head of the army, and the king appointed Zadok, the priest, to take Abiathar's place. Next, the king summoned Shimei and told him, Build yourself a house in Jerusalem and live there, but you may not leave there to go anywhere. If you ever do leave and cross the Kidron Valley, know for sure that you will certainly die. You will be responsible for your own death. Shimei said to the king, My master, the king's proposal is acceptable. Your servant will do as you say. So Shimei lived in Jerusalem for a long time. Three years later, two of Shimei's servants ran away to King Achish, son of Maacah, a Gath. Shimei was told, Look, your servants are in Gath. So Shimei got up, saddled his donkey, and went to Achish, a Gath, to find his servants. Shimei went and brought back his servants from Gath. When Solomon was told that Shimea had gone from Jerusalem to Gath and had then returned, the king summoned Shimea and said to him, You will recall that I made you take an oath by the Lord, and I solemnly warned you, if you ever leave and go anywhere, know for sure that you will certainly die. You said to me the proposal is acceptable. I agree to it. Why then have you broken the oath you made before the Lord and disobeyed the order I gave you? Then the king said to Shimei, You are well aware of the way you mistreated my father David. The Lord will punish you for what you did. But King Solomon will be empowered, and David's dynasty will endure permanently before the Lord. The king then gave the order to Benaiah, son of Jehoiada, who went and executed Shimei. So Solomon took firm control of the kingdom. Solomon made an alliance by marriage with Pharaoh, king of Egypt. He married Pharaoh's daughter. He brought her to the city of David until he could finish building his residence and the temple of the Lord and the wall around Jerusalem. Now the people were offering sacrifices at the high places because in those days a temple had not yet been built to honor the Lord. Solomon demonstrated his loyalty to the Lord by following the practices of his father, David, except that he offered sacrifices and burnt incense on the high places. The king went to Gibeon to offer sacrifices, for it had the most prominent of the high places. Solomon would offer up a thousand burnt sacrifices on the altar there. One night in Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream. God said, Tell me what I should give you. Solomon replied, you demonstrated great loyalty to your servant, my father David, as he served you faithfully, properly, and sincerely. You have maintained this great loyalty to this day by allowing his son to sit on his throne. Now, O Lord my God, you have made your servant king in my father David's place, even though I am only a young man and am inexperienced. Your servant stands among your chosen people. They are a great nation that is too numerous to count or number. So give your servant a discerning mind so he can make judicial decisions for your people and distinguish right from wrong. Otherwise, no one is able to make a judicial decision for this great nation of yours. 
The Lord was pleased that Solomon made this request. God said to him, Because you asked for the ability to make wise judicial decisions, and not for long life or riches or vengeance on your enemies, I grant your request, and give you a wise and discerning mind superior to that of anyone who has preceded or will succeed you. Furthermore, I am giving you what you did not request, riches and honor, so that you will be the greatest king of your generation. If you follow my instructions by obeying my rules and regulations, just as your father David did, then I will grant you long life. Solomon then woke up and realized it was a dream. He went to Jerusalem, stood before the Ark of the Lord's Covenant, offered up burnt sacrifices, presented peace offerings, and held a feast for all his servants. Then two prostitutes came to the king and stood before him. One of the women said, My master, this woman and I live in the same house. I had a baby while she was with me in the house. Then three days after I had my baby, this woman also had a baby. We were alone. There was no one else in the house except the two of us. This woman's child suffocated during the night when she rolled on top of him. She got up in the middle of the night and took my son from my side while your servant was sleeping. She put him in her arms and put her dead son in my arms. I got up in the morning to nurse my son and there he was dead. But when I examined him carefully in the morning, I realized it was not my baby. The other woman said, No, my son is alive. Your son is dead. But the first woman replied, No, your son is dead. My son is alive. Each presented her case before the king. The king said, One says, My son is alive. Your son is dead. While the other says, No, your son is dead. My son is alive. The king ordered, Get me a sword. So they placed a sword before the king. The king then said, Cut the living child in two and give half to one and half to the other. The real mother spoke up to the king, for her motherly instincts were aroused. She said, My master, give her the living child. Whatever you do, don't kill him. But the other woman said, Neither one of us will have him. Let him cut him in two. The king responded, Give the first woman the living child. Don't kill him. She is the mother. When all Israel heard about the judicial decision which the king had rendered, they respected the king, for they realized that he possessed supernatural wisdom to make judicial decisions. God, the stories of Solomon are very well known, even to people who don't read the Bible. This particular story is very well known uh, to people, but... It's so heartbreaking to see the start of Solomon's reign start off the same way it ends, with disobedience to you. By marrying the Pharaoh's daughter, Pharaoh, king of Egypt, daughter, Solomon is going against your orders to not intermarry. He's doing it for, I have no doubt, political reasons. But he's not abiding by uh, your rules and your commandments. And I don't think I'm giving away any surprise <laughs> ending. But we know that Solomon, that is his demise as well. That he has taken on so many wives who all have different faiths. And now he is starting to worship all these other gods that are of his, his various wives. God, I think we miss those things in our own lives these sometimes small or insignificant sins, if I can call them that, that aren't dealt with. And, and we think we're fine with them. We think we're in control of the situation. And they just blow up to bigger and bigger issues in our lives because they weren't taken care of originally when they should have been dealt with. Um, not only for Solomon's brother, Adonijah, who should have been reprimanded long before he even thought he could take over the kingdom. Um, but I suspect uh, all of his sons, all of David's sons, were a little bit self-indulged because of their actions as they came into various types of power. Our own actions need to be dealt with. We need to look at ourselves in full, complete 
light and understand the pieces that shouldn't be there and not have these hidden eyes or or filters that weed out and look look over or gloss over these things in in our world um, that may seem small or insignificant or we've got this figured out we can stop any time type of situations and we just really can't and they start spiraling out of control this truly is this marriage is truly the end at Solomon's beginning so God today I just ask that you allow us to be reflective to just really examine our lives and find those areas that are the dead parts of the tree and allow you to trim those um, to take off anything that isn't growing that if isn't healthy um, that isn't going to produce good fruit and just trim those away for us um, and I do know that that part's painful <laughs> We've had this conversation many times, but it is so well worth it that once you get all that dead weight off and once you readjust your sinful lives and, and we start following you and, and the path you have set for us and are obedient to you, um, including all of your commands, it is the only way that you can make us flourish even more in glorification of who you are. God, prune away. We're ready for it. We understand that there's things about us that we may not even see. But I know if we ask you, you will show us. In your son's name I pray. Amen. <laughs>